I'm sure you've seen the million posts online, YouTube videos saying, can Halo Infinite survive? Is it dead? Will this update save Halo? Well, it kind of has. And I have the numbers to prove it. And why right now is one of the best times to jump in and start playing Halo Infinite. So if you want to know why, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So I've had some time to jump in and play some Halo, but I know the main thing a lot of you guys have been playing, requesting, and know what I've been playing as well. And it seems like the rest of the community it's been Forge. And I've been saying this since day one of Halo Infinite. Once Forge comes in, that's when the viral content will come in. It will show people engaging with the game. They'll be creating lots of content for it because everyone makes a Forge map. They're going to post it somewhere for everyone to check out and download and play. I mean, just type in Halo Infinite Forge on Twitter and you just scroll through countless amounts of videos and really interesting things people are doing with this game because Forge is such an amazing tool that can really go above and beyond really what the developers can really do with the game because obviously their hands are tied to kind of make something that's a little more strict to the gameplay style and stuff like that but it's just really great to see that people are genuinely excited and jumping in and engaging with halo again and also it seems like the community has done as well just at large as the population has definitely soared since halo infinite's up winter update launch you can see right here here are the most played games on xbox and there is no measurement of how this is actually done but it gives you a rough estimate about how the most popular games are obviously with Modern Warfare 2 fortnite apex and roblox like grand theft auto those games are like the top tier games are really tough to get involved with but if you scroll just a little bit down i mean just a little bit force of five siege halo infinite rocket league and destiny 2 that means we have more people on xbox playing Halo, then Destiny 2. And from my last account, Destiny is doing quite fine for themselves when it comes to population and engagement with the game. I'm sure you're watching this video going like, but well, what about the Steam numbers? As the Steam chart numbers are basically the only metric we have of actual numbers to see what people are playing, you can see that once the winter update went live, the population soared. I actually made a video talking about this last time, saying the day before we peaked around 4,000 concurrent players, and then day of the patch, almost 13,000. That's over tripling the population of Halo Infinite overnight. Yeah, it has declined a little bit. We see a little bit of spike for the weekend and stuff like that. But also keep in mind that a lot of players on Steam are more focused on playing a mouse and keyboard, which obviously hasn't really been that great with Halo Infinite that entire experience. So you see less people playing it. But no other update has created such buzz and excitement for Halo than the winter update. Just seeing the vast amount of content being created with Halo Infinite about Forge just really showcases how people are still very much interested with this game. It's not dead on arrival there is a chance for it to come back and see some success which we are seeing right now because of halo infinite's forge mode and people genuinely being excited about playing halo again which is super awesome with forge alone we really can see the content creation side of things and people creating buzz about halo continuing on as people are always going to be making something new and cool with halo infinite's forge we have some amazing things coming around the horizon as well someone posted this work in progress right here of like playing simon in Halo Infinite, which is just like a really fun mini game. He says he's also looking to find a way to make it into like a 1v1 experience as well. So that's gonna be coming around the corner, which I think is gonna be really fun. Lots of videos gonna be made about this and people are gonna be having just like some fun, casual, wacky stuff that you can do in Halo, which is something that it's always been known to do with Halo as a product as a whole, is that you can always do some wacky, crazy things with a game that you can't really have anywhere else. That's what's so amazing about this franchise. You have Infinite Forges making his version of Damn nation which is gonna be coming out relatively soon and it's not just like your typical just remake which we have seen in halo right now but it's like a banished version of damnation and if you know anything about infinite forges and what he's able to create with forge you guys are going to be in for a treat we're definitely going to be covering this map as soon as it goes live because it's going to be something amazing that you're going to want to check out and get a chance to play this is it's such a cool banished version that it's going to be, again, like I'm just super excited about his stuff. Paymon, if I pronounce that name correctly, made this Husky Raid map. This is just released. We haven't had a chance to jump in and play it, but the aesthetic of this is absolutely incredible. So if you guys think Forge stuff has been really great now, just give it like an extra month and some more amazing things are coming. The best is yet to come. This has only been out for like a week and a half, almost two weeks. And we're already seeing just jaw dropping developer level content made in Forge by the community. So the content is coming. The content is on the way. And how can we forget about campaign online co-op, which is a complete blast as I've played this before. I've played it on stream and I guys like if there's any Halo campaign to play co-op, it's Halo Infinite. 
better than any other co-op campaign I've played, which I can say that because I've played all the campaigns co-op, which they've always felt like a single player experience that you're playing with your friend kind of thing. Halo Infinite online co-op really does feel like you're playing campaign at, with your friends, if that's really kind of makes sense right there. Like the game is fundamentally designed with co-op in mind, which is just such a cool experience. It's so much fun just to get your loadout, kind of grab what kind of weapons and vehicles you want, get some Marines with you as well, and they all jump in and you have a blast just well blast and the banish together, which is super fun. The match XP and challenge system changes have been fantastic where match XP, just playing the game is your main source of how you grind through the XP style of system with grind through the battle pass. And then the challenges are kind of like a nice little supplemental boost to give you some more XP, which is exactly how challenges should be playing out in Halo Infinite. Not the first year that we had where it would force you to use different weapons that you didn't want to really utilize, even though it's still there, but it's a little more generic nowadays. Uh, forcing you to play different modes you want to play and stuff like that. That's all gone. We're now it's just like, get kills with an assault rifle, play X amount of games, earn X amount of points within a match. Like that stuff is just play the game, which is exactly what needed to be there day one of Halo Infinite. But we also have another update coming for Halo Infinite before the end of this year, which I'm very excited about. One of the little sneak peeks that we've had is that with a little bit of customization that's been locked since day one, community manager replied to this on Twitter saying, do we yet know how to get the Requiem Revengeance stance and Act of Genesis stance, Infinity Ship Weapon, Charm, and Banished Deception Wasp Codeine in Halo Infinite now that co-op has been released? And Unishrike actually replied to this saying, hey, the last info I have is that the stances and weapon charms should be unlockable after a quality of life update that's planned to land before the end of the year. So we're actually going to get a drop pod before the end of this year, guys. If you don't remember, those drop pods are supposed to launch, well, every month for us to get some new stuff to at least quality of life updates, uh, changes to the game and something like that. But we only had two throughout the entirety of season two. Though yes, technically we are still in season two, but after the winter update, it feels like 2.5, you know what I mean? And the developers feel the same way as Sketch recently tweeted out saying the winter update is a huge step forward, but we still have a lot of work to be done kind of thing. Then he played some content updates beyond the winter update and saying that we got good stuff cooking, which is exciting. 343 community writer Alex Wakeford recently said that it feels like to me the first major step in a great leap forward for Halo Infinite. Playlist designer at 343 also mentioned that saying it's happening we're finally getting there what an exciting time to get involved. So the winter update is more than just like a couple bits of reach customization that we haven't had a chance to play around with yet more than just like some updates in the back end. It's a major turning point within this game that we really can see things moving forward that it's gonna be a bright future for Halo Infinite. I'm sure you guys all remember this infamous roadmap, right? That sent the community ablaze, which rightfully so, but you can see that we have season three with it comes like narrative events, more customization options, a new battle pass, weapons, new maps, developer maps, new equipment, like a true like seasonal update finally happening with season three coming in March, guys, was only like four months away. So it's again like the first step towards seasonality to where we actually have some stuff to do and talk about when it comes to playing Halo. So the future is very bright, guys. Now, there's still going to be things that they're working on right now, especially with like the server issue that's going on with Halo Infinite. That needs to be addressed as soon as possible, but it's been going on since July, which we've heard a little bit when it comes to progress being made on that. In a reply to Pro Player Snake by talking about like, yeah, all this extra stuff is great, but if the servers are busted, it's still a busted game. And actually, Unishek replied there saying, we're able to repro it internally and gather data, just need a little bit more digging on the data. Meaning they've pretty much found the source of the big issue with the servers where like their ping fluctuations going up and down really a lot of inconsistencies people being kicked and stuff like that uh so it sounds like they found something they can at least help with that experience and improve it and probably maybe even come with the december update if it does you know i'll share with you guys here on the channel but was halo infinite a dead game no it was just in hibernation though it's not all sunshine and roses when it comes to this update as the map argyle has certainly been having its issues if you guys want to know more about it Check it out right here. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.